I've got a question here from Courageously B. How do I get rid of brain fog? My name is Toby Morrison from CFS Health. If you don't know me, we're gonna answer this question today. So this is uh, an interesting one. We cover this quite deeply in our program. I'm gonna do the best of my ability to answer this uh, in a short video right now but there's more to it. The first thing you need to remember and factor in is your sleep. Your brain and your body rest and repairs and regrows overnight when you're sleeping. So if your sleep is inadequate, it's poor quality, uh, it's interrupted, that is going to affect your concentration levels, your focus levels, your energy levels, and basically is what's creating your brain fog. Now there are some ways to reverse this in other ways as well to help you through the day, but I'm gonna tell you this first. Your sleep is super important. And it's not something that you can change overnight, but we've, we've seen clients literally go from not being able to sleep at all, insomnia, like waking up every, every three, four hours, to sleeping soundly for nine hours a night. It's possible, okay? Uh, within two months, which is pretty cool. Okay, for some it takes a little bit longer. The thing that you want to do and remember is the quality of your nighttime sleep is determined by the quality of your day. You want to have the, the perfect day for you, so doing the right amount with where you're currently at, that's actually going to help produce good hormones at the right time for you to naturally fall asleep. And we, we call this good tired. We want to get to the end of the day where we're good tired, not uh, totally exhausted and energy drained that you feel terrible and that there's symptoms. You don't want to have an overactive nervous system where you're like feeling fired up just before bed. These factors are daytime sleeping. You know, if you're sleeping too late in the day, if you do have to sleep during the day, I'd recommend sleeping from the windows of 10.30 a.m. till about... Uh, 3.30 p.m. at the latest. That will help your nighttime sleep and you want to slowly decrease that as you get healthier and stronger. The second thing that you need to factor in is your daily activities. How much are you doing? When are you doing it? Are you resting and repairing in between that? And again, I'll leave a free link in the description to download the free baseline training and this will help you figure out what you can do with where you're at so you don't feel worse, but you can also gain some consistency, have better days so you can have better nights, as in sleeping, and then build from there. Is hydration. The first thing you should do when you wake up is, first of all, uh, gradually go and see the light, the daylight. So if you can open your windows, your blinds, go outside, um, seeing direct sunlight eventually. I know some of you uh, might have sensitivities right now. Eventually build into it. That will help switch on your brain as well and go, oh, it's morning time, okay? And this will get, this will get your circadian rhythm going. And uh, again, this stuff is all about routine and structure. Once you get into a good routine structure, you will feel so much better, trust me. It just takes time. If you're diligent about it and you have the right accountability, you can do it pretty quick. So hydration. I always say try and have one to two glasses first thing when you wake up after you see the light. You want to get that going. Now, sometimes your digestive system is going to be pretty clogged up. You want to do the right amount of movement for you. Now, some of you, movement will be going from your bed to sitting up. For some of you, movement will be going from your bed to the couch. For some of you, it'll be sitting out in your garden for five minutes, okay? You have to do the appropriate amount for you. Everybody's different, okay? This is why we have a whole set program inside our program of frameworks to choose what's right for you with where you're at. And from there, you can build up. Brain fog can be caused purely by congestion in the digestive system. So you might notice whenever you go to the toilet or after you go to the toilet, you feel clearer, you feel a little bit more energized, you feel a little bit better, okay? So we wanna make sure that the digestive system is moving, okay? We're going to the, uh, to the bathroom regularly. We wanna have healthy poos, which is a good sign of progress and digestive health. And the other thing that I would recommend and mention is nutrition. A lot of people are under eating. They're not eating enough food and food is fuel. The thing that you wanna factor in here is your blood sugar levels. So if you're kind of eating one or two or three meals a day, but they're quite spaced out and they're not well balanced, you're gonna have energy fluctuations and basically cognitive fluctuations with uh, focus. So what I would recommend is instead making sure that you're having healthy whole balanced meals so making sure you've got protein and healthy carbohydrates and fats in each meal not just separately like not just like an apple and that's it have your protein and your carbohydrates together in the same meal this will build sustaining energy throughout the day and you don't want to wait until your energy completely drops off 
You wanna refuel your system before you get to that point. So that'll really help too. High fats, high protein, good healthy carbohydrates is going to give you longer lasting, uh, sustaining energy. Uh, not this like sugar high and then you feel like crap and then sugar high and then you feel like crap. You wanna have sustained energy levels throughout the entire day. Make sure that you're sipping on water throughout the day. Hydration alone can be a huge one. And then of course, we wanna calm down our nervous system. So anything that's gonna help us calm down, we have a whole bunch of restorative um, movement and also restorative breathing exercises inside our program but it's amazing what the right amount can do for you. Just simply getting up and doing, you know, two minutes of restorative breathing or five minutes of restorative movement, um, if that's appropriate for you, can help you get out of that fog and re-energize you. Sometimes energy creates energy. And so sitting and waiting and, and kind of waiting for things to change doesn't happen. So you need to make that change yourself. Again, I'm not saying go push yourself, I'm saying do what's appropriate for you and then build from there. Have a long-term plan with this stuff. It's not about like a quick fix changes. I hate it when people message us, we get hundreds of them like, tell me a tip, tell me the tips. It's like, no, you need a plan. And in that plan, there's many things you need to do in order to help yourself. Figure out a plan, do an inventory of where you're at and what you need help with and then work on it. The more you work on it, you know, someone said to me the, the other day, the greater the effort, the greater the reward. The longer you put the work in, the better the reward you'll get back. And we see this all the damn time. We just had one of our members got to go and watch her son play rugby for the first time in two years. We had another client literally finish his MBA of study. Another one just fell pregnant and then paid off all her debt. These things are possible, but it takes time. And, and the, the ones that are winning are the ones that are consistent. And so stay consistent, do the work and notice results. Don't expect overnight change. I think that's what happens. You think you do it for two days and you go, oh, it doesn't work. No, you gotta have a long-term approach with this. Go check out the baseline training. I'll leave a link in the description for that. If this video was helpful and it reminded you of some good things for you to start doing, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.